My colleagues and I at the University of Waterloo have built a large-scale model of a functioning brain called Spawn. The model receives its only input as a 28 by 28 pixel image and controls a simulated arm. In this video, we see both the activity of the various brain areas and decodings of the neural representations in those areas. The first task is a recognition task. Spawn writes the digit it sees in the image. Individual neuron voltage spikes are shown scrolling through the thought bubble at the back of the brain. The decoded value is displayed on top of that activity. The second task is called copy drawing. Instead of just recognizing the digit, the model must reproduce the style of the digit. Here it successfully copies two styles of the number 2. Spawn's representations are thus useful for both categorization and encoding fine perceptual details. The next task is a counting task. This task demonstrates that Spawn can not only represent and categorize numbers, it also has an understanding of numerical concepts like order. Spawn is first shown a number to start counting from, 4, and then it is shown how much to count by, 3. We can see the internal progression of numbers as it counts and finally writes its answer. Next we have a question answering task. Here Spawn memorizes a list of numbers and then answers a question about the list. You can watch the topmost working memory as it stores the items in the order they are shown. In this case Spawn is asked what is in position 5. Spawn answers the question by decoding its working memory and using the result to drive the arm. The final task is a serial working memory task in which Spawn must memorize a list of items in order and then repeat it back. We have seen several tasks that Spawn performs correctly but the errors it makes are equally important to determining if it is a good model of human cognition. Note that the darkness of the letter in the thought bubble indicates how well that item can be decoded from the current representation. Spawn is now drawing its memory of the list, but when it gets to the 8, it is no longer confident in its own decoding of that memory, so it draws a horizontal line, indicating it has no answer. If we look at the pattern of errors over many versions of Spawn, we will notice that it matches the details of human error patterns. We have now seen half of the tasks that Spawn can perform. The rest are in other videos on the Nengo.ca website.